Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about measures of central tendency as well as dispersion but from grouped data. So the difference from previous sections is that the data is not raw anymore. It's actually already grouped, maybe like in a frequency distribution table or relative frequency distribution. So we're not working with the raw data, which will actually um, make us have to do approximations, but we'll go through that. So we've discussed how to compute descriptive stats from the raw data, like all of our data points. But a lot of times that's actually not possible. We're often given the summarized data or grouped data. And so we can't actually find exact values such as mean or standard deviations without the raw data, but we can find really good approximations. So we're gonna do that in this section. Okay, so we'll start with approximating the mean. Here are our formulas for population mean and sample mean. I'll talk through these and then I will show you um, at the end how to do all of this using technology. We're going to use StatCrunch. So remember your notation. Mu is your mean for your population. X bar is your mean for your sample. And so how you find the means from the group data is essentially the same calculation for both of these. You take each of your data points from your group data, that's the X, each of the X's. You times them by the frequency and then the capital sigma means we're adding. So we add up each of those. So I have my first data point times its frequency plus the second data point times its frequency and so on. And then I divide by the total, which is the total frequencies. Same thing for the sample mean. So often we are given classes, not always, but with our group data, we a lot of times have classes that we're working with. But sometimes it might just be the single value points here. And so if that's the case, we would treat this a little bit different, and I'll mention that. But for this one, this is classes. So this is representing the total fine for uh, 50 parking violations. And so notice we have our classes, lower limit and upper limit, and then the frequency in each class. So it's a grouped data. And so we want to find the mean for this. So this is what the formula would say. It says to find the midpoint. So because we're working with classes, if you look back at our formula, we needed a data value, a data point from um, this table. We don't have a single value. We actually have a range of values. That's our class. That's why we're selecting the midpoint for the X's. Like I had mentioned, if it's not classes, then you would just take the actual value as, as X. But because we have to select something between, for example, 50 and 74.99, the midpoint is a good thing to, to pick. So you just use your midpoint formula. You take your lower class limit plus, in this case, the lower class limit of the next class, and then you take their midpoint. So you add those up and divide by two. That will give you the midpoints for each of these classes. And then I'll show you with the technology in StatCrunch that um, how to select if you're using what it says here, two lower class limits. And so we have those values, we have our frequency from each of those classes. And so our formula said that you multiply these two. So you multiply the midpoint, which is X, times the frequency from that class. And then you do that for each of them. And then we want the summation. So we wanna add all the frequencies and we wanna add all of the X times F. And then the formula says that we divide these two numbers. So we had all of those added up and then we divide and that would give us our mean for that data set where the data was grouped instead of raw data. So let me show you in StatCrunch how you would do that. So if we have our data already grouped for us, so we open it in StatCrunch and it's already grouped or we input it, what you're going to do is you're going to go to summary stats. Normally if it's raw data we would have selected columns but because it's already grouped we have to actually go down to grouped grouped or binned data. And so when we select that, notice that you have bins. Bins are your classes. So anytime it says bins, that's your classes. So for us, that's the amount column. So we're gonna say amount is our classes or bins. And what we're counting in this case was the frequency. So we have our frequencies. And what we wanna do is we want the mean. And now here's what I said about the midpoints. The way that the midpoints were established for this example was that we were using the two lower limits 
um, from one class and the lower limit from the second class. So we're going to just click this button because of how we were finding our midpoints. You can also find the midpoints by just taking the lower limit and the upper limit of the class, adding those and dividing by two. But in this example, we just chose to use a two consecutive lower, lower class limits. So I want to make sure that I click that so that it's consistent with what I did by hand. So then I'll just say compute. And then notice that's the same answer. It's, if we round it, it is the same 182.50. And then just a quick caution, whenever you compute the mean from group data, then you have to actually uh, be aware that it, it is an approximation. So if you have access to the raw data, you should choose to use that instead because it would be more accurate. Next, let's compute the weighted mean. So this one we are going to do more of uh, the by hand process. So the weighted mean, the difference is if you look at the formula, it's essentially that we're not really calling this thing that we multiply by the frequency anymore, we're calling it a weight. And so you're still going to be doing essentially the same formula, but you have your individual x values which would represent like a, maybe a midpoint of a class or the actual data value and its weight. And then so you add, e, uh, you multiply each of those, add them up, and then you divide by the total of all the weights. Okay, so here is an example. Um, Marissa just completed her first semester in college, and we have her grades for her classes. And now with the classes, depending on the time uh, that you spend in the class, that's equivalent to a higher weight if it's more time. That's uh, the same thing as a unit. So like units in your class or hours that you spend, uh, the more that they are, it's weighted more heavily. And so in this one, notice she has an A for a four hour class. So what you do is you take the A, first of all, you have to remember about um, grade point averages that um, A's and B's and C's and D's all correspond to a number. So that's actually something we need at the beginning of this. So we're going to take that value and times it by the fact that it was a weighted four hour class. Okay. So in our calculation, we have four for an A times four for the four hours. Okay. So that's the first term. Then we have a B, which is a three as a weight, as a number or value. So A's are four, B's are three. So the B is three and the class was a three hour class, so the weight was also three. Then we had another A, so that's a four. So A's are four. And the class was three hours, so that's the weight. The weight is three, so four times three. C's are two, so A's are four, B's are three, C's are two. And so you have a two for a C, and it was a five hour class, so the weight is five, so five times two. And then last she had an A, which is a four, times a one hour class. And so we multiply each of the weights times the, the data value. In this case, it's a number corresponding to the letter grade. And then you do that in the numerator. And then what you add up in the bottom is all of the weights. Previously, it was all of the frequencies. And so for us, we just add up the four hour class plus a three hour class and so on. And that's out of the, t the total. So you can think of it as her, her taking 16 units this semester or spending 16 hours a week in class. And so the total on the top was 51, giving her an overall GPA of 3.19. So the last thing we want to do is approximate the standard deviation from group data. Similarly, like with the mean, there is a formula for this, and we will actually just use technology to find this. The formula is a bit much. Um, here it is. So we have the population standard deviation as well as the sample standard deviation. Notice these are not identical as with this uh, mean formulas, those were the same. So the difference with them is the sample one. Notice that when you take the sum of the frequencies in the denominator, if it's a sample, you actually have to subtract one from that number. So what this is saying is basically you take all of your data values, and it could be the actual data value or um, like maybe the midpoint of the class, you subtract the mean, okay, so mu or x bar. This gives you the difference between the data value and the mean um, from your population or sample. You square all those values, and then that's what you multiply by each frequency. So instead of just the x's times a frequency like we did with the mean, you have to take the difference between your data value and the mean. 
square that and then multiply by the frequency. Then the bottom is still the sum of the frequencies, but like I said, if it's the sample standard deviation, you do subtract one from that number. And then at the end, you actually take the square root. Without the square root, we would call this variance. Um, so it, this is gonna be our standard deviation. So this is another version of the formula. It might actually be quicker to work with this version if you had to do this by hand. Notice the denominator is the same, but what you get to do different is you could say all of your x values, you square them. These might be like midpoints. You square them times your, multiply by the frequency, add all those up. Then you can separately take all of your x values, multiply them by the frequency, and then add those up and square that number. Okay, then you do the subtraction, um, but you have to also divide by the sum of the frequencies here. So it just might be faster this way because you don't have to do the subtraction before you do the squaring and the adding. But we'll do this with StatCrunch. Uh, but here's what it looks like using the formula if you just kind of break down the formula. So notice again we have classes. It's the same example with the parking violations. So we don't have just single data values here. We have classes. So we're going to pick the midpoints, and remember that these midpoints were found using the consecutive lower class limits. So we used 50 and then 75, and so on. You would use 75 and 100 and, and take the midpoint of those two. We have our frequencies. That was what was given. And so we had computed the sample mean earlier, so we need that number now in order to find standard deviation because what you have to do is you subtract that from all of your data values here, in this case, the class midpoints. So you would just say, for example, 62.5 minus the mean, 182.5. That's where this negative 120 came from. And let's go over to the other end. If we had 312.5 and we subtracted the mean of 182.5, that's where our 130 came from. Once you have all of those differences from subtracting, you have to square those numbers. So you just take those numbers and you times them by themselves. And then the last thing you would do is you would multiply those by the frequency. So for example, you could say negative 120 times negative 120. Then you have to multiply that by one. That's the frequency. That's where 14,400 came from. Uh, let's pick the other one on the other end. This would be 130 times 130 Again, if this happens to be times one, that's the frequency, that's where 16,900 came from. So we need the sum of the frequencies again. We did that earlier, it was 50. And this time we need the sum of this calculation. And then our formula says that we're gonna end up um, dividing these and then taking the square root. Okay, so we have those values. So we divide them. And then because this was from a sample, we do have to subtract one from the sum of the frequencies. So notice the denominator is actually not gonna be 50, it's gonna be 49. And so that is gonna be divided and then you don't forget to take your square root and then that would give you your standard deviation. So let me show you that it is actually very quick to do it with technology. So if we just have our data like we did in StatCrunch, um, if you already have it open, you can just edit this and then you can change this to standard deviation. Or if you hold control, you could do both. Control on your keyboard. But let's say you didn't have that open and you didn't, have, have, didn't compute that earlier. Remember you just go stat, summary stats, and it was from a grouped data. It was already summarized. Our classes were in the amounts column. Our counts were in the frequency column and this time we wanted the standard deviation. So we hit compute, and notice we get the same value, 54.16. Okay, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.